Tuesday, May 27th. I'm Rim. I'm a Dr. Mario. And this is Geek Nights. Tonight we talk about Scott. <laughs> Let's do this. Yeah, considering the uh, bank holiday yesterday, we decided not to do a show. Yeah, probably because it was, you know, late at night walking back from getting ice cream. Hey. Oh, that was the worst thing. We had the Visigoths over, which were, they were surprisingly non-Visigothic. It was. We still have a big mess to clean up. Yeah, but not nearly as bad as past, and pretty much everyone pulled their part. But uh, we, were, we were walking back from getting ice cream after getting dinner. Yesterday. And Rim is like, hey, Scott, what are we going to do the show on? Tonight. And I'm like, ah. Oh, <laughs> uh. And then uh, I think the conversation went something along the lines of bail, bail. Yeah, that wasn't going to happen. It was too late, and there were people there, and yeah, there was nothing to talk about either. Yep. It was a good weekend, though. We played a lot of Vigi games. No, a lot of Vigi game playing going on. I'm trying to clear out the Vigi game queue, because like, once I clear it out, I can. Um, it's like free, uh, free sailing on all this other stuff. But yeah, I don't know. Anyway, uh, it was warm today. Warm today. <laughs> yeah, not so not as warm yesterday. Yeah, quite warmer today. I was quite. I, I mean, I was actually surprised. I get up and I'm tired, and I go to work, and I, and I get off the train, and it's like a hundred degrees under Grand Central. <laughs> it's it's really hot because there's all the train engines under there, and yeah. Yeah, I gotta be like all those MTA employees. They always get on the train and Beacon in their pajamas. Yep. Uh, then they change at work in the locker room. I wish my work had a locker room. All right, so well, let's get right into this, because uh, since Scott get home, gets home late lately, he gets home like a couple hours later than usual. Pretty so, much exactly uh, one hour later. Yeah, but then you know, we don't do the show right away, and one thing leads to another, and now it's late. Yeah, well, what do you want? Come home earlier? I can't do anything about Yeah, you that. could. Thank what you. happened to, if my job ever asked me to do blah, I'd give him what for? I did give him what for. <laughs> and you're still staying late. It didn't work. It wasn't, what do you mean it didn't work? <laughs> <laughs> what what for did you give? What for is when you give what for? See, the problem I have here, right, is I could just quit, which I would do, but it's like, I kind of don't, I kind of like the people at work. I don't then don't quit. Make I don't demands. <laughs> I did, but the, that demand will not be met. <laughs> really? Did they say, well, we're not going to, and if you press for it, we'll fire you? Oh, uh, no, they're pretty much like, you know, that's how it's going to be. And it's pretty much my options are quit or, you know, Stay an hour later. If I were you, I would pretty much be already looking for a new job. I'm looking around a little bit. I'm feeling the waters, but the problem is, no, the is hospital, that like pretty much the day the hospital went to, yeah, stay late for all this BS. I was pretty much I spent from that day, like the next day, I spent the first hour of my work looking for a new job. Yeah. I looked around. I could find a new job pretty easily. The problem is, is unlike the hospital where you hated everyone, right? Uh, the people at my work, it's like I'm I'm needed quite a bit right now, and I'm kind of well. If you're, I don't want to screw them over because I like. If them. you're needed, then you can make some sort of demands, either more vacation time or more money or something. Well, I did. I went in with my vacation today, and I think I'm gonna get you know all the days. Like I'm basically not gonna work much in August at all. I'm gonna get the whole week after Oticon and Oticon and Pax. And the Kineticon day. I'm going to get all them days. And Monday. Which, uh, so, yeah. Anyway. Anyway, so I'd like to point this out. Xbox Live Arcade is pretty much unmitigated awesome. Like, well, it's, it's, it's for me, it, it would be like the only reason to get an Xbox is to play all those games they got in there. Like the Carcassonne and the Pac-Man and the, the, but, the but, Settlers. But, but, a very important game is now out on Xbox Live Arcade. This Bionic is a game, Commando Rearmed, right? Not even talking about that. Okay. This is a ver four-way versus game that you all must, must play. It is a game. Four-way versus, huh? It is an ancient game. It is one of the most popular games in the history of the Atari. Combat? No, no, four-way. Combat's uh, two-way. Kong Pro-Am, which is four-player? Yeah, it does. So does uh, that Olympic game. That's a bad game. I, I like that game. Oh, oh, you mean the Olympic Pong, right? The oh, one that's just uh, like every kind of Pong the human race could conceive. Right, right. No, right. this is a game where there are four corners and four people. Warlords. And oh, my God. And each person has a little wall to protect, and inside of that wall is their penis. <laughs> it's a castle with a guy in it. No, no. It's a castle with a video frame in Xbox Live. Uh. Video of your penis. 
Oh, I mean, it, I, oh, it's a good car. I imagine. Very excellent design decision. If someone were, I don't know, crazy, they might put something in that video other than their penis. No. <laughs> Maybe if they're a girl. <laughs> but then you got to have a sham penis ready to go. <laughs> sham butt. <laughs> what comes out of a sham butt? Shampoo. Uh, <laughs> That's a good call because the, the basic idea of Warlords is that you're playing this sort of four-way pong and everyone has this sort of corner of the board to protect and they have a castle wall and they themselves are inside the castle wall. So what better, to ha instead of having some, you know, digital avatar representing the person inside the castle wall, have a video of them inside the castle well, wall. Well, it's a great idea. Of their penis. Well, you know, I get it's a good idea. I like it. Uh, but Warlords... And Warlords is a great game. It's what, I guess, I really, I think that the best kinds of games to play with a whole bunch of people, especially like casual gaming, are the very abstract, very directly competitive games. Games like, my dot's going to push your dot off the board. Well, that's, I think the Boom Blocks is fun for that reason. Yeah, we gotta play that Boom Blocks. Well, it's not worth $50. No, that's the thing, is the Boom Box looks really fun, and I'm sure it's really fun, and I can sort of tell that it's gonna be good if I play it. But seriously. But it's not worth $50. Warlords? Bring that shit down to 30 yo. One, you can get, if you have an Atari, you can get Warlords for like a dime. You can get Warlords for pretty much almost any system. I have Warlords on my DS. And in fact, Warlords on Xbox Live is only 400 Microsoft points, which is like 800 space dollars. Well, how many, how many, is it, it's, I know the Wii, a one point is like one penny. So what is it on the, the Microsoft? Do you think I, uh, one Microsoft point is 8.94 pence times a euro. I don't, I don't know. Times a euro, that's a lot. <laughs> that's like $10. <laughs> <sighs> All right, is that all you got there? What else am I going to say? It's Warlords. What, I'm going to review Warlords. You know what? <laughs> Warlords is fucking awesome it's, play. It. It's really fun. As long as you play in the multiplayer. It's not single player's lame. Terribly deep. <laughs> well, there's the catching mechanism. Well, not only if you turn that on. I don't know how the Xbox One goes. There's there also like, the speed release me mechanism. There were a couple of modes in the Atari. Mm, it's true. Actually, though, if anyone's hardcore, and I got to see if we can get one of these for Katsukan. I don't know if we can, but the Warlords arcade cabinet, the upright, was pretty mad. It was two-player, whatever. Yeah. The cocktail version, which is one of my favorite ways to play games. Oh, I that love, is that is excellent. I love those old cocktail cabinets. Like, If I had, like, a room that needed a tiny table, I would get one of those. The thing is, there's something about those cocktail cabinets that it's not just, like, the functionality or whatever. That is from a different era of gaming. That is back when video gaming was not the purview of punk kids. But video gaming was something that they expected mm. to sell to somewhat well-to-do people in bars. When I was a kid, there was a, a, a dentist or an orthodontist I went to, I forget. But it was a, some waiting room of some office. And whenever I went there, he had, uh, he had a little arcade. And in his arcade, he had a Galaxian cocktail set, right? And I, from until I saw Galaxian upright, I thought that just, oh, Galaxian is like that. <laughs> I didn't realize that it was a thing. Yeah, but used to see, these cocktail cabinets used to be just fixtures and bars and restaurants. Yeah, doesn't all over the Bomber's place. Burrito Bar have a Pac Man cocktail one? Yes. No, I, I, I don't remember if it's Pac Man or Ms. Pac Man. I forget. But all. I do I'm remember that it wasn't at all easy. <laughs> it required the precise. Okay. <laughs> Man, we're just playing inside baseball all night tonight. <laughs> but seriously, it just it harkens to a different age, and there's a certain element of class there. And I, I, huh, I had an idea just now. Huh. Why don't we make like cocktail cabinets of like newer games? Like maybe just put a PC in there with some Mame or something, or huh. or I don't know. I'm sure it's been done, right? Wait a minute, you know what? Just pop an Wait, NES you know and a TV in there with we've an been, LCD screen. We've been looking for a use your hands and not on a keyboard project for a long time, and. The last one we really got into was Rip Makes a DDR Pad, and that, Here, ended, it's really that ended in disaster and $400. Check this out. Here we go. Ready? Real simple. Get a normal table that two people can sit at. is the right height for sitting at, right? Two chairs. Cut a hole in the table. Put a piece of glass in the hole in the table. Mount an LCD screen under the glass. I, you'd, actually, you'd probably be better off with a recessed CRT. Well, I'm just saying, you mount some sort of screen under the glass. Uh, why don't we... Uh, then I can put abstract, some sort of... I can abstract maybe a Mac your Mini idea there. a little bit. Why don't we make a cocktail cabinet and then play games on it and have that in our lounge and be all classy? Yeah, but I want to put like a turn-based strategy game, like an Advance Wars in there. 
Ooh. Uh, I just imagined some Sip 4, the Sip 4 uh, cocktail cabinet. The thing is, I don't know if Sip 4 is the best. The choice. beautiful thing about the cocktail cabinet was that usually when versus, two people would sit across from each other sharing drinks while playing a game. Well, I mean, I've seen pictures of like older Japanese arcades, and when they had like versus games, it would be two cabinets. And they would be facing opposite each other. So if the cabinets weren't there, like you would be looking your opponent in the that eyes. That is because Japan is brilliant. But instead in the U.S., when there's a versus game, it'd be two people standing next to each other. That's because Americans are cheap. Yeah. But regardless, to knock it off on a tangent, if you can find a cocktail warlord's cabinet, not only are they pretty big, not only are they four-player and people sit at the four corners... Good God, are they awesome. Yeah, it's like, pretty much the best Warlords experience you can get. That's up there. As long as it works. If it's broken, it sucks. It's, <laughs> it's up there with Rampart. And I'll say this. <laughs> it's not Rampart. No, good. no, the, the experience, though, of sitting around the cocktail. Oh, cabinet. man, Rampart cocktail. I don't know if that, I don't think that existed. I think it would work, though. I think it really would. Really well. I don't think it existed. Because everyone had the trackballs, but on their own. Huh. What if we ported German board games to a cocktail cabinet? Be okay, but you're better off just playing German board games. Well, maybe uh, Twilight Struggle. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. So the the Penny Arcade game, the uh, Precipice of Darkness, uh, came out. Yes. And I bought it for twenty dollars. Well, you and everyone else, according to I'm not going to quote anyone here, but it set some records for sales. What kind of sales did it make? The first episode of Penny Arcade Adventures was the highest grossing Xbox Live arcade debut ever. Oh, okay, so that was but that was on the Xbox Live. There's all I bought the PC version. Yes, I just read that paragraph. You keep talking and I'll read the sales stats. All right, so if you buy the PC version, it's pretty interesting what they do. When you buy it, they give you a key and you can use that key to either play the Mac, Windows or Linux versions and you can actually like use the key multiple times cuz they hate DRM as much as we do. Of course, this also means I can give the key to Rim, which means we only have to pay $20 to both play the game, which... But then again, then again, there's the... Uh, we didn't talk about this yesterday because, you know, bank holiday, but there's some news on that front regarding the right to first sale of software, but we'll talk about that next Monday. Yeah. Anyway, um, so this game... Uh, it's a Penny Arcade game, right? It's their first game. It's an episodic game, so there's going to be more episodes... All right, I beat the whole game, and this is what I have to say about it. The Penny Arcade-ness of the game is delectable. If you like the Penny Arcades, this is the Penny Arcades full on. You got the awesomeness dialogue of the Penny Arcade styling, the awesomeness art of the Penny Arcade styling. You got some animations. You got some nice sound effects and music. You got some environments. The voice acting is superb. The, the almost, writing there's is There's almost excellent. none of it, but yeah. But when it's there, it is superb. Pretty much everything about the game uh, in terms of, you know, the artistic creation and the visuals and the audios and the story and the everything is fa fantastic. The game itself is meh. If it wasn't a Penny Arcade game, there would be no reason Wait, to Wait, but I thought you always argued that style and, and not meant nothing, and all that matters is gameplay and That's substance. not what I say at all. You say I that say all that the if, there's, if there's no... <laughs> that's not what I say. Uh -huh. What I say is if the th only thing a game has to offer is something that is not gameplay, then there's no reason to actually play it. You can always just so get does, that... So does the Penny Arcade game offer good gameplay? Not really. Uh huh. It's only slightly better than your average. Uh, it's it's not. See, the thing is, it's it's sort of fighting with itself. It's deciding whether it wants to be sort of a Japanese turn-based RPG combat kind of game, or if it wants to be sort of a like point-and-click adventure game. And I really think if they just made it a full-on point-and-click adventure game and forgot about their silly turn-based RPG combat, the game would be a hell of a lot better. But it's like, they'll, you'll go somewhere and it'll be like, oh, kill all the clowns in town. So you walk around the town killing all the clowns. Then it's like, oh, now you got to kill all the barbershop quartets. So you go around killing all the barbershop quartets in the exact same four screens. You know, and it's sort of like, uh. And the combat itself, while better than, say, Final Fantasy, where you just choose menu items and wait. You know, it's got sort of that dexterity thing that, like, some of the Mario RPGs have, where it's like, you know, you got to push the button really fast and then hit it with exact timing in order to do the most damage. You know, that's, that's good. I like that kind of action. But you, there's not that many moves 
and actually doing the combat is sort of annoying because there's no like keyboard shortcuts or anything. You have to like wait for these the attacks to ready themselves, then click on them, then click on the bad guy. And the bad guys are move you know, sort of moving around and fighting in real time. So like if one of them is coming in to attack you, it's like you gotta sort of ah, where'd he go? Oh, there he is, click, you know, and at the same time you're waiting for these attacks to finish getting ready, you have to push the space bar with precise timing to block. And that's very, very annoying. But it's also very, very easy and very quick. So you know, you get it over with and sort of out of the way. I feel like the game is probably worth it just for the style. And, and if, if you're a fan of Penny Arcade, it's, it's pretty much the ultimate fan experience, sort of, I guess, having sex with the two of them. See, the thing is, playing it, though, it really feels like they should have just made a Penny Arcade, like, Flash animation, anime. Flash animation TV Just an animated series. Penny Arcade movie? Yeah, just, you know, it's, just they could have made it Flash, the thing just is, like Homestar the Runner. Is, they're about video games, so I feel like what they're doing is that they, instead of making a movie and instead of making a game, they've kind of bridged the two in a way where there's gameplay elements in what is otherwise just a movie, and yeah. there's movie elements in what's otherwise just a game, and I feel like from what little I've gone through the game so far and looked at it and read and. I feel like this is a better combination of the two than many other games have done. Yeah, that is one. There is a merger somewhat of the, the plot and the awesomeness and the gameplay. Like, you know, walking around, looking at the stuff, you sort of, you know, the story is sort of delivered in what you see while you're playing. And, you know, you talk to people in town and that gives you some of the plot. The game and is made, made by what the first like background NPC says when you first encounter him. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> I don't think I should spoil it. No. But good God, did that make the game for me? Yeah, but um, you know, if it, if they didn't have that sort of stuff in there, you wouldn't have to play this game. You could just go on YouTube and like watch a video of all the you know the dialogue and all the text, and then you'd you'd be set. Well, it depends. I mean, there's something to be said for experience now while games haven't done it very well and i think there's a lot of ground to cover before games i mean there's a lot more we can do in terms of gaming as a, as a medium for expression but there's a like playing final fantasy 4 especially final fantasy 6 is a good example where if it had been just a movie it probably would have been a really damn good movie and if it just been a you know a tv series or whatever i think it would have been good but because it's a game, instead of investing one hour or if it was like a full season, 12 hours or 13 hours into it, you end up investing 40 or 50. And while that gets old, if you haven't experienced that before, I can see how that kind of, you can build more investment into the characters by causing you to have to go through all this stuff with them instead of just watching it. Yeah. I just wish games would do it better and not just make everything a tedious... Well, that, that is the one thing that the Penny Arcade game does right, is that it's very short, because it's only one episode. So even though the RPG combat is sort of, sort of annoying and not that great, and you sort of sometimes in the game you have to do it... I mean, when you fought the Barbershop Quartets, there were like only four of them, and then that was it. So it was like, oh, I beat them all. Okay. So it none of it really takes all that long... So you don't get a chance to be really pissed off at it because when you're about to get pissed off, you sort of, you beat it. And you're like, oh. The only thing that I could see could be annoying is sort of trying to go around and get everything. Like, I just tried to blow through the game. I didn't try to, like, get all the stuff. And apparently there's a lot of stuff I didn't get, so. <laughs> yeah, I feel like a lot of that's not worth it, though. It's, it's totally not worth it. So, yeah, uh, if you like Penny Arcade, then it, probably worth your while to get the penny arcade game and i'm actually i'm pretty sure that the, the xbox and the pc versions are the same so if you have an xbox i'm going to suggest you get that version because even though i haven't played that version i suspect the rpg combat will be less annoying using the gamepad as opposed to being forced to use the mouse to click on all these different things all over the place yep and uh but if you do buy the pc version you get mac linux windows versions which is way cool and they yeah, it, it totally works. Like, the Linux version works. It just doesn't work on my laptop because the video card is sort of bleh. But it totally works on Windows, and it works on my Linux computer at work where the video card is good, and I'm sure it'll work on a Mac. I haven't tried it. Ah, but anyway, things of the day. A little old here. Uh, people who are super cool have probably seen this, but... Uh, I'm not a huge fan of Warhammer 40k, but I, I before any, I mean, a, a bunch of you are already on your way with pitchforks, but I don't dislike 
Warhammer 40k. I love big miniature giant armies fighting games. Yeah, my only real problems with Warhammer 40k are the price and the amount of time it takes and the amount of space it takes. But at the same time, it's the kind of thing where if you're into it, like, I mean, people who play Warhammer are usually, they're into it more for the modeling and the army and the style. Yeah, if you're just doing the modeling alone and you never even play the game, that's that's perfectly cool. Well, even the game, too, because it, it's a lot like how we played Battletech, where yeah. the game itself is kind of crap. Well, it's not that bad. I mean, Battletech is. Warhammer, not so bad, but Battletech's uh, pretty Battletech's bad. Battletech's not bad. The way we played, it was pretty bad. The way we played, it was bad, but if you play it, you know, big, real time, it's great. It, no, because then it takes the rest of your life. Same as Warhammer. <laughs> not, not Warhammer. Warhammer is a more it's a tighter game. I think it's a better game. Uh, I don't know. I'm pretty sure they're they're pretty equal games in my eyes. Warhammer is more of a you know tactical and strategic armies around and if unless you play make an eighty pound mech and then let's all fight. That yeah. If you play BattleTech, yeah, you're supposed to have like lots of mechs. But having lots of mechs bogs down a lot more quickly than the games like Warhammer do. It's not fun. It doesn't work. Well, it's also the difference between you know the squad based kind of game and the army based kind of game. Anyway, Warhammer, like these kinds of war games, I feel like the way, the best way to enjoy them is not so much to care solely about the winning and losing and that like the gameplay mechanics. And I'm going to make the best possible army to win, blah, 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 blah. Because while that's fun, the, the depth of Warhammer is not that great. And randomness rears its ugly head on more than one occasion. Pretty much all occasions. Not quite. <laughs> yeah. But. Ask the Warhammer players if, they're, if their dice are really good to them. <laughs> yeah. See how many say yes. But the thing is, the way to truly enjoy these games is to play with an awesome army and know that that army is awesome. Now, what is more awesome than uh, the Hello Kitty army? The Cthulhu army? I think the Hello Kitty army is better. The Hello Cthulhu army? Catherine's Hello Kitty Sisters of Battle. Alrighty. This is the kind of army where if I had time to play a game like Warhammer, this is the army that I would field. Because whether you win or lose... If you're playing with an army like this, that says a lot about you. Uh, maybe I'd feel a Gundam army or something, because I take those robot guys, and because I totally be the robot guys. How could you not be the robots? Do you do you even know the who are the robots? Uh, I remember that someone said it before. A Tau. It's are Tau. the are the Tyranids from Warhammer or from something else? Tyranids, Tyranids. It's not. They're not from Starcraft. <laughs> Those are the. Anyway, <laughs> there's some pictures here. It's pretty cool. But I, I just feel like this is the utmost expression of everything that Warhammer is and ever should be. Yeah, it's that's definitely what the guy who about. comes in with the perfect army who has the best statistical chance of winning is not nearly as cool as the guy who comes in with his awesome orc army. <laughs> <laughs> I just like the orcs. Yeah. All right. So check this out. I heard about this website on the. Uh, I think it was on the twit this morning. I guess it was the twit from this weekend. But anyway, it's called Import Genius. And it's not a free website, so you can't really get much use out of it unless you're going to pay. But what this website does is incredibly interesting, and I think I can tie it back to video games. What this website does is they access the information from the U.S. Customs. So they know what's being imported into the U.S. and to who. So, for example, you can go to this website, and if you paid, you could do, like, a search, I guess, and it, you could say, you know, who imported computers? And it would say, you know, uh, IBM imported, you know, cr five crates of, you know, computers to so-and-so. Or, you know, the, the example that I've made me discover this website was Apple imported, like, 30-something crates of electronic computers to Cupertino. Huh, I wonder what those are. <laughs> New iPhones. Um, so the reason this is interesting for gaming action is because you could see, huh, Nintendo imported, you know, X crates of, you know, DSs. Oh, there's new DSs. Or, you know, Capcom imported a something something. And All right. Yeah, I think that you could definitely, you know, sort of figure out when... You know. you yeah, you know, you can figure out when new games are going to be imported, when consoles are going to be updated, all that sort of thing. So I feel like some of the you know gaming review uh, sites, you know, or the magazines, the the so-called professional gaming media, should get accounts on here and uh, keep tabs on what's going on because I can't afford to. It's kind of some side channel, side band information there. Yeah, I mean, plus you could. It, there's definitely all sorts of cool stuff in there. You know, like. You know, you can see when, like, sugar is coming in or, 
you know, corn syrup. Well, well, sugar's very important because first you get the sugar. Exactly. And then <laughs> you get the power. And but, then you get the weaving. But I mean, is, that, there's got to be all sorts. I can't even begin to think about all the you know interesting stuff. You can see whenever like a large shipment of goods comes into the U.S., you know what it is and who's getting it. And that that is freaking useful information if you are in the right kind of position. <laughs> So, uh, it's me, a Mario. I'm not a real doctor. Do not let me touch your genitalia. Okay. <laughs> That's the old joke, is, is don't let Dr. Mario touch your genitals. He's not a real doctor. Where is that joke from? I forget. We uh, made it up. I don't know. No, 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 we didn't. It was from Bash.org. Oh, was it? That's where I got it from. Anyway. Uh, it must be. All right. Talk. This will be a short show. Talking yeah. about Dr. Mario. Yep. So, there was a WiiWare game that came out yesterday. And it's the Dr. Mario for the WiiWare. And um, I played it, and I'm better than everyone I know at Dr. Mario. He is. <laughs> he, he's about as good at this as, I don't know, some people are at Advance Wars you know in comparison. What's you know what's funny? I remember when I was a kid, and Dr. Mario came out for the Game Boy and for the NES at the same time, and they made a big deal out of it. There was a big marketing push. Oh, there Dr. were cartoons? Mario. Between every TV show I watched about Dr. Mario. I would I was in, I remember being in a toy store back in the day when toy stores were amazing and there was a TV screen up, you know, in the in the the store and it showed Dr. Mario being played on the screen. And it was like, "Whoa, whoa." But I never got Dr. Mario as a kid. Not for the Game Boy, not for the NES. I just never got it. And I don't think I played Dr. Mario until like Late high school, early college. I just never played it at all. Yet somehow I'm better than everyone at it. I don't get it. Eh, well, I used to be pretty good at it, but I haven't played it, I don't know, since I was a kid with any regularity. Yeah. I focus more on games like Battle Balls or Advance Wars. Yeah. But the thing about I don't, I don't want to sit here and explain how to play Dr. Mario, but Dr. Mario is a, is a color matching game. But it's mostly what I like about it is unlike some of the other games, like, say, Tetris and such, it's, you know, when something clears, the stuff sort of falls down, and the game is all about sort of putting things in a position so that when they fall down, they'll be in a good spot. So you're looking like you have this sort of deep look ahead in the game that you don't, other games have sort of the more immediate clear the shit out of the way, where Dr. Mario has more of the set up things properly so that when you do clear them out of the way, more stuff gets cleared out of the way afterwards. But anyway... Let's talk about the WiiWare implementation of this game. First, I mean, you can play it like normal Dr. Mario, and it's fun, and it works. And it's, it's Dr. Mario. It only lets you play one versus one, though. There's no other mode. Yeah, see, I thought that they were going to have, like, a full-on four people playing regular old playing Dr. Mario at the same time, which they could have done, but they didn't do that. I don't know why. Yeah, I, I was hoping for some... I, don't, I, I didn't know what, but I was hoping for some sort of... DS or some some kind of extra weird mode because there was this is the kind of game where they would test like the weird mode to see if it works at all. Well, they put in this flash mode, and we figured out how the flash mode works. Is basically you're playing normal Dr. Mario, except some of the little you know goobers on the screen are flashing, and if you get rid of those flashing ones, you win. So you only have to get rid of the flashing ones. That's it. Yeah, it's not. It's actually a pretty good mode because. You know, it allows for quicker gameplay, and at the same time, it's sort of, instead of just trying to clear everything out of the way, it's like, well, you know, why waste your time clearing the whole board? The goal is to just clear those guys and not anyone else, and it's like, huh. And it sort of makes you think in a different way and put your pills in a different way in order to sort of make a channel, like, straight down to the, to the deep flashing guys. But the only other thing they really added is this mode where you and all your friends can play at the same time, grabbing pills simultaneously and putting them onto the board and it's, it's kind of a you know us versus the game mode but it's really not that fun at all yeah they made a co-op mode called like virus buster and basically it's dr mario except everything is big right and you use the wiimote to point at the screen you have a little target and you can grab the pills you know sort of with the wiimote by pointing at them rotate them and sort of drag them into position and what's interesting about this is you can manipulate the pieces that are in, like, the next area. So you can sort of pre-flip them. It's not interesting at all, though, because all you can do well is done. flip them. That's you it. Can, you can also, when little bits are, like, let's say I clear out some horizontal stuff and the stuff on top is falling. When something starts falling, you can sort of grab it and move it, which allows, you know, a lot more flexible options there in terms of 
you know, where you can move pieces rather than just, you know, if something's falling, it, it falls where it is. And when you're dragging the pieces around to position them, you can't drag them up, but you can drag them left or right through other pieces, which is sort of tricky. You know, it's not something you can usually do in, in a normal Dr. Mario game. So that sort of gives you options of, of ways to be able to have four people, you know, sort of collectively trying to beat the Dr. Mario. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it escalates a little bit or it'll get faster. Then it gives you two or three pills at the same time. Yeah, but, two or three pills uh, at the same I'm gonna, time. We're not cool. going to beat around the bush. The end result is that it's really not that fun. It, it's kind of broken. It's just, there's you'll play it once or twice and you'll never play it again. The reason it's not fun is because if you play it by yourself, right, just one person, it's pretty much impossible because you can't handle three pills at a time when you're only one person. And it's no, you might as well just play regular Dr. Mario, which is better. And if you have multiple people, right? First of all, you want to be just playing normal Dr. Mario against each other. You don't want to be doing this. And second of all, what ends up happening is the everyone's cooperating, but really what you're doing is just hindering each other. Like one guy will try to put something in one spot and someone else will be trying to do the same thing. But the end result is like they both push the flip button and then it ends in the wrong position and it, it's really basically everyone just gets in everyone's way and then you lose and it's really frustrating and it's like you're all trying to cooperate but by trying to cooperate you end up screwing each other which is very very upsetting it's not like say four swords you know where you know you any any harm you do to each other is sort of intentional and silly it's 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 very upsetting that you're all actually trying to cooperate, yet you end up just dicking each other over and getting pissed off and then not wanting to play anymore. A much better way to play seems to be to sit there with a Wii mode in each hand and play it by yourself. That's an okay mode. That's actually kind of fun. Yeah. But th that's it. Actually, I played the Wi-Fi because it lets you play Dr. Mario against people online. And I think it's the first time you've ever been able to play Dr. Mario online. And you know what? It worked, and it was kind of good. It's well done. It works just fine. You know, what I, else can I say? I seem to remember that you know the Tetris DS was like the online game I played more than any other online game, at least for the DS or, or Wii. And this Dr. Mario, see, I think that the dropping pieces puzzly game is definitely like the kind of game that Nintendo gets right with the, with the internet action. Of course, at the same time... Uh the original, you know, you play this game on the NES or whatever with your friends. And while it's a versus game, it's 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 not really, it's more of a, you're both racing to the finish. There's very little interaction between the players. I mean, it's not like, uh, well, Battle Balls, because I mentioned it earlier, where it's this whole game of timing combos to c cancel out the other person's combos and then combo them. Your combos do very little, and there's almost no variation in what they do. So. Yeah, your combos do some, if you get a big combo. All the combos do is, je is determine... Basically, who got the combo first slightly inconveniences the other person. So it rewards you for speed. Yep, but at the same time, uh, the combos can actually might not even do damage at all. Like, it might drop two bits on the other guy's board that actually help him out and make it easier for him. So, so yeah, there's not too much. I guess I just, I more enjoy games where there's more direct competition, like Warlords. Yeah, yeah. Or Battle Balls, even though I'm awful at it. I would just enjoy Dr. Mario more if I played against someone who was actually as good as me, which is actually why the Wi-Fi comes in handy, because everyone here is, is no good at Dr. Mario. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome to the Advance Wars world of Rim. Yeah. It's it's weird. It's like I don't understand why other people aren't good. Like, I look <laughs> at it, and it's just sort of obvious where to put the pieces. I, I don't understand. Well, I guess the listeners left to play you and prove that you're wrong. Yeah, you're let's, let's do the friend codes for Dr. Mario. We probably I should. Still, I've been meaning to fix the ID share thing. And I kind of suck at it. But you even you skip these games, so you're gonna work on stuff, and you're just playing games, other games. I know, I know. It's you not play good. games, write code, or play games and not pretend you're gonna write code. I don't have enough time to do. I need to do both. I don't have enough time. I should just not sleep. Nah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know how worth it this game is to you, unless mm. unless you already like Doctor Mario. I wouldn't bother to be honest. Yeah, this game is like I think this is really only worth it for fans of Doctor Mario. If you're not a Doctor Mario person. You probably, it's not worth, I think it's like 10 bucks, right? Yeah, if you're not sure, if you're a Dr. Mario fan, just get a ROM, play Dr. Mario on the NES. Yeah, yeah play some Dr. Mario before you actually buy Dr. Mario to know if you if it's a game that you're going to like and play a hell of a lot. Because I, I can actually see myself playing the Wi-Fi version of this, you know, quite a bit when there's no other Wii games to play. See, though, that's, that's the... I guess the biggest failing of Dr. Mario, that, and it never got... I guess I'm sad that they never added something to it to add this, but... 
whenever you talk about a game like Battle Balls or all those other like puzzly games, there's always the stories from the heyday of, man, that one game where I totally blah, 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 the 100 combo blah, and then blah, 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 blah. You have like these battle stories of the times you won by some crazy fluke or the times you lost because the other person had this gigantic combo, like the combo of the gods, but... There's none of that in Mar- Dr. Mario because well, people who are much better than me can set up huge combos, but they're not epic. They don't do much in the game other than they're cool to watch, but they're not, you know, they're not memorable like some other games are. They don't hit the other guy. They're not like this. Everything explodes. They're just, oh, I beat the game very cleverly and very quickly and I've won. Now yeah, we will continue and play mo- another game because it's mostly a game of slowly chewing away all the viruses rather than blowing the hell out of them really quickly. Yeah, there's no timing element at all in terms of get the combo, don't get the combo. There's none of that. No, it doesn't have that action. I don't know. Just you never hear people talking about their Dr. Mario war stories, but a lot yeah. of people have puzzled upon war stories. Yeah. Actually, one thing about uh, Dr. Mario is Dr. Mario has really good music, and they've added a few new musics to it, and I don't like them as much as I like the old musics. The old Aren't they just and... remixes of the old? No. Or no, that's in flash mode. No, there's... Uh, because they have, you know, fever and chill, but they added, I think, cough and sneeze, right? And I didn't realize it until just recently that the songs, you know, the original songs in Dr. Mario were fever and chill. And I didn't realize that the reason they were called fever and chill is because it goes with the theme of Dr. Mario, fever uh, and chill. Are you kidding? Uh, and then the co- the fact that they added cough and sneeze. You're not kidding, are no, you? You're totally. not. You're not. <laughs> I, I I thought this was a joke. No. The uh, fact that they added cough and sneeze, I said, oh, the songs are named after symptoms. God, Scott, this is just like that time when you realize that the Beatles isn't spelled like the bug. It's spelled like a beat in music. Yeah, I didn't realize that for a long time. All right, well, uh, you probably don't know the answer to this then. What are the names of the three bugs? The three things in Dr. Mario? Yeah. The three viruses? Yeah. Red, blue, and yellow? No. No? No. I don't know. Annoying, annoying, and more annoying? Fever, chill, and weird. Really? Really. Oh. I think red was fever. Yellow was definitely weird. Red had to be fever, and blue was chill. That makes sense. Yeah, it totally makes sense. I could look it up, I guess, but I'm I'm 99% certain that's how it was. Huh. That's interesting. See, it's weird because, like, Dr. Mario sort of has, like, this mystic lore to it in a way. <laughs> One piece of lore, and <laughs> we've already revealed it to the world. Yeah. Another thing about this new Dr. Mario is that it incorporates the Miis a little bit, which is pretty fun. Like, when you win and you see your me wearing a, a lab coat and a stethoscope dancing and, like, pumping his fist, that's good times. Ah, <laughs> fist pound. Fist pump, not fist pound. Yes, but the joke was fist pound. I can't say fist... Uh, anyway. 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 We got... Anyhow, in general, uh, I like the falling block puzzle games, uh, and I really think that they're some of the best video games from a gameplay perspective because they incorporate the quick thinking, the pattern recognition, and the rapid hand-eye coordination action all See, into one game. I feel like game. the most important aspect is just the direct abstracted competition. Yeah, they, that definitely is a bonus added on top, but... And I think we're really stretching trying to talk about Dr. Mario. Yeah, I know. We I, we were going to talk about sort of falling block, you know, puzzly games in the genre. But so apparently we already did that show. We already show did that show like two years in ago. In 2006. So we can't do that show again. So we had to talk about just Dr. Mario. Whatever. We got a good show lined up tomorrow with the anime and the comics. Yep. This has been Geek Nights with Rim and Scott. Special thanks to DJ Pretzel for the opening music. Be sure to visit our website at www.frontrowcrew.com where you'll find show notes, links, our awesome forum, a link to our Frapper map, and links to all the RSS feeds. We say feeds plural because Geek Nights airs four nights a week covering four different brands of geekery. Mondays are science and technology. Tuesdays, we have video games, board games, and RPGs. Wednesdays are anime, manga, comic nights. And Thursdays are the catch-alls for various rants and tomfoolery. You can send us feedback by email to geeknights at frontrowcrew.com. Or you can send audio feedback via Odeo. Just click the link that says send me an audio on the right side of our website. If you like what you hear, you can catch the last 100 episodes in iTunes or in your favorite podcatcher. For the complete archives, visit the website, which has everything. Geek Nights is distributed under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial Sharealike 2.5 license. This means you can do whatever you want with it as long as you give us credit 
Don't Make Money and Share It in Kind. Geek Nights is recorded live with no studio and no audience. But unlike those other late shows, it's actually recorded at night.